On page 70 is an example of a sinus rhythm with aberrancy and more specifically a sinus tachycardia with aberrancy. And aberrancy simply means that the conduction in the ventricles doesn't follow the normal pathway. So um, the key here um, is that we want to correctly interpret the underlying rhythm. And so to do that, remember we always look for evidence of atrial depolarization followed by evidence of ventricular depolarization. Uh, so despite the fact that this QRS is wide, it begins here and ends somewhere around here, so it's clearly a wide QRS, we have consistently uh, P wave per QRS, P wave, P wave, P wave, P wave, we have that. Uh, with every single beat, P wave followed by QRS. That means that we have a sinus rhythm with aberrant conduction. And um, um, aberrant conduction might simply mean that, for example, we have um, the SA node for firing normally and getting through the AV node down the bundle of his. And then when it goes down the bundle branches, it may encounter a block, for example, uh, a left bundle branch block. Um, and in this case, if there's a left bundle branch block, that means that the wave of depolarization happens very quickly down the right bundle branch and across the right ventricle. But in order for the left ventricle to depolarize, it has to depolarize from muscle cell to muscle cell, which is slower, giving us this wide QRS complex. Um, so this could just as easily be a right bundle branch block or a left bundle branch block. There are also some fascicles that come off the left uh, ventricle, and we could have, uh, excuse me, that's uh, not very good, but um, there are some fascicles coming off the uh, um, left bundle branch, which might also be blocked, so we could have a bifascicular block giving us a wide QRS. Um, that's what's meant by aberrant conduction. So again, the key here is to uh, look f when we see a wide QRS complex like this. Our concern, of course, is, you know, could it be that this is a ventricular rhythm resulting from an ectopic focus down to the ventricle? Well, no, because we see a P wave preceding each QRS. That's the key. So look for that P interval preceding each wide QRS, and then we know we're dealing with um, a sinus rhythm. Uh, with aberrancy, and in this case, um, you know, here's one that falls in a dark line. Let's count the heart rate 300, 150, 110, 20, 30, 40. So in this case, we have a sinus tack of um, 140, excuse my, uh, my writing here, of 140 with aberrancy.